Hey guys, what's going on? Next up for the Lab Video Game TV, we are here at MEST, where we're gonna be talking about the entrepreneurs of today who are gonna build our future infrastructure tomorrow. So it's time to get in there, get these guys pumped up, because they're gonna be the ones that's gonna be building our roads. Let's go. Does anyone know when the first game was created in the world? Commercial, like recognized by human history as a The first game. Take your guess. No, games. Video games is just an evolution of games. But like, think about board games, uh, you know, checkers or anything like that. Games. The concept of like competing against someone using your mind on a platform where you can beat them. It doesn't have to be physical. That's actually physical sports. Can I, um, I think it was chess and Indian. You said chess and where? Yeah. Indian. Ancient India. Oh, okay. Anybody else? I think that was When you say ancient India, do you have a year you can give me? Just, you don't, it doesn't have to be accurate. Just give me a. Um, that's 2000 something. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? Oh. So. The oldest known game in history by human records is a game called Senet, S-E-N-E-T, right? This is an ancient Egypt game. It's an Egyptian game. Has anyone ever seen that? Uh, it's, it looks like this. she's sitting down like this, and she has a hand, it looks like it's a chessboard. I'm like, if you Google it, type in Senet on Google. Uh, that's what I love about technology. <laughs> We're going back 3,000 years ago. So, oh, yes. Before Christ. Yes. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> Alright, so before Christ. Um, so, when we look at gaming, I think one of the biggest disconnects for Africans is that we are somehow mystified like we're entering something new. No. We're be we're we are coming back to something we invented. In the video game industry, uh, this is the one thing I've learned about gaming period, whether maybe esports, game design, game development, it doesn't matter. In business, consumer base wins. At the end of the day, that's the number one rule. Whoever has the most customers win. Well, based on this principle alone, the largest consumer base in the world is that? Never thought about that? No. For games? For anything. There's a cartoon I used to watch uh, called DuckTales. Anyone ever watch that? DuckTales! <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, so you guys know. Does anyone know the greatest lesson taught in that cartoon by Uncle Scrooge when it comes to working and money? He says it almost every episode. This cartoon was actually teaching you a lesson about economics. All right, so no one knows. Work smarter, not harder. You guys don't remember that? You guys don't remember that? Oh, oh it was a kid that just went over you guys' head. Oh, I, I was always like, what do you mean by that? And I asked my dad, he was like, there are many routes to get to an end goal, but we're taught, you ever heard of this line? If you work hard enough, you'll eventually get there. That is an absolute lie. The world leaders do not work hard. They have us working hard for them. See, that's working smart. <laughs> so they got us to do the hard work. They, the smartest of the, the smart work was convincing us that working harder is going to get us to the goal. In reality, um, I don't know what the numbers are. Some people work hard and they make it. Most people work hard, they don't make it. In the end game, any ideal you have, any ideal you have, it's not can you do it. It's what tool can I use in technology to get to the end game. The reason why I brought up the first game is because games are a form of technology. It helps us think critically and competitively. 
problem solving. This is what advances us as human beings. When you are an entrepreneur and you're like, all right, I want to start this business. Um, what business do you want to start? Well, I'm going to go into e-commerce. You want to go into e-commerce, right? Okay. What business do you want to start? What do you guys do? Real estate. What business do you want to start? AI. AI? AI? Yeah. Okay. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Right? That was a lie that was to jail you <laughs> from being an entrepreneur. It is what you know. And what you know is what tools can you use to get to your destination? Because of technology, who you know is irrelevant. It's not important anymore. I don't, this is not me popping my collar or showing off, but I'm going to give you a real time story. I'm an immigrant from Jamaica. My father's Rastafari, late past away. His dreadlocks fell off because of cancer, so I had to grow my locks for my dad. We come from a poor background, public school, dropped out of high school. I don't have any, well, I have one year of college experience. I have no degrees, I have nothing. So, now you're wondering, how can this guy be sitting here telling you guys what, what to do next? It's because I realized that the power of your future is in you. It's not in somebody else. Other people's job, if you come to them, is if you're coming to me asking me for help, what's in it for me? So they're taking value all, already away from you and they're adding it to them. So if you want to keep your value to build your business, you cannot go to anyone. You have to go to yourself. And you have to look for the tools in today's technology to help you get to where you go on your knee. But this is why back then in slavery, they didn't want anyone to read. Because if you could read, you, do, you don't need anybody. You will know what to do. But advance that 100,000 times with computers. There's a line in, um, uh, the U.S. is called GTS. Does anyone understand what it stands for? If you don't know what to do or where to go, Google that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's your answer. So that's actually overall how you move forward. That's how I move forward. I was like, okay, uh, I love video games. I play video games, I play them a lot, mastered my craft. That's no different from an artist who loves to draw all the time, a basketball player who's in the gym shooting a thousand jump shots a day, a, com a computer designer who's sitting there going over his, his craft over and over again. So you repeat these crafts over and over again, that's training to master your craft. And then you start to develop ideas on, okay, how can I execute it? So for me, I said, I want to make an esports team. I want to become the number one game team in the world. How am I going to do this? At the time that I thought about this, it was it was good because no one really liked video games. I'm sure anyone who's ever played video games in here, their parents have told you stop wasting your time. Video games is no good for you, etc., etc. But my father, well, he encouraged me. He said, if that's what you're good at, do it to your best. Uh, so I said, all right, and I played. And I used to go to video game tournaments in the arcades and stuff like that. And when I got older, my wife, well. That's why she was like, um, yes, it didn't work out because of that. it took too long. But uh, <laughs> she was like, um, you're just going to sit here and play video games all day? And I'm like, no. Oh. Like, she was like, you need to do something with it or get a job. And my father used to say, do you love video games? Yes. So he says, well, you either need to get a job to maintain what you love or turn what you love into a job. And you all know if you turn what you love into a job, it's not work. It's just love. So if you're not really working, every morning you'll get up because this is what you love. So you're not like a, a nine to five job. The alarm goes off. Do I really have to go to work today? And you have to sit there and think about the finances. I can skip a day and you just go to sleep. But when you love what you do, there is no days off. You get up and you're there. I'm running on three hours of sleep. I went to the TV station and then the beach and then, okay, we went to the TV station last night, got up this morning, two hours of rest, went to Metro um, live this morning and then here I am. Because this is what I love. So it's, I can sleep when I die. When I die. <laughs> A lot of these things, I, I really, it's the divine powers of the universe that actually led me back to Africa because my mother passed away in 2012 
literally after I got the Guinness record, and our um, dying wish was that she would want, you know, Jamaican people to have, like, to win at something. Uh, this is when the, the reggae boys made it to uh, the, the finals of the World Cup. And they lost, but they were almost there. So, and she was like, she would want to one day see Jamaica win at something. And I was like, well, I don't have a sports team, but I have a new sports team. So, and I said, and I, 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 I've completed one task in America, which has become the number one uh, winning team in the world. So, that goal is done. So, what's the next goal now? So, the next goal is, okay, sustainability. In order for me to sustain my team in this massive ecosystem uh, called the video game industry, which generates over $100 billion annually, in which people of color have 0% ownership in. And I do mean, I'm using the word zero literally. We don't own anything. Even, I own my team, but that doesn't count when you look, when you count me, oh, okay. 0.000001. So we got, we got put up the one again. okay, so. But it's, it's infinitesimally you can't even count. And that's, there are not a lot of people like me, and that's not because we are not interested in the scene, is that we're told that in order for us to enter the scene, we have to go under other people. You guys are in the greatest place of all time. You guys are actually here on the motherland. This is somebody coming from the West telling you that. And you would think that's crazy that if you guys want to survive, you need to go to America. Wrong. Stay here. Don't go anywhere. And I'm going to explain to you why you don't go anywhere. Like the Avengers, Africa is the end game. <laughs> In Jamaica, I created a, um, a, thing, um, a project called Just Dance Africa. And I got some girls who are actual dancers, regular girls who dance in the street, and we made Just Dance music videos. And we made them in Jamaica and we made one in Ghana. And when I came up here for my campaign to help uh, expand the video game market, I forgot I went on TV on Head Start yesterday and I talked about it and the lady was asking, well, what's the purpose of this? And I said, I want Ubisoft, the company makes it in France, to recognize that we are gamers that want to play Just Dance in Africa, but they need African songs. They pay people money to create dance moves to songs that are already existing. The people who make the songs literally are getting royalties from the game. You, you play, try to upload a Just Dance song on YouTube, copyright claim. Like, they're, they're getting the money. So imagine if Just Dance had African songs and African dancers in it. Look at all of our big entertainers. I'm trying to reach out to one of those guys. And this is what I'm talking about, working like with somebody. Imagine I could get an entertainer um, who's the biggest um, hip hop artist here in, in Ghana? Shatawali. Shatawali? Alright, there's an argument here. <laughs> Alright, so we're going with, we're going with, we're going with Shatawali, right? Imagine Shatawali, um, he makes a big song and he gets some girls and he starts dancing with it. And he can get like 20 million views on that on YouTube. If he actually just contacted Ubisoft and said, I would like this game. In just that, Ubisoft is going to take us. All right, so um, how many Nintendo systems or PlayStation systems or Xbox systems are sold in Ghana? Because they need to know whether or not it's feasible even to put that song in the game to see who's going to buy it. But if Shatawali, and I'm saying his name correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine he says, I'll make a music video, a Just Dance music video. And I'm saying that for him to know. So you see that video that you're doing right there? Put that on you, Shatawali. Make a Just Dance video, make my job easier, please, and get um, um, African music and dancers in the next Just Dance. Dancing is a part of our big time culture. So we have something to sell Ubisoft. So this is a sale to Ubisoft. Well, I'm not asking Ubisoft for anything. Like, Ubisoft, you want money? Put Shatawali's video in your next game and get some dancers or some urban dancers. And you want to see how much money Africa will make you. It'll sell more than everyone else. That's guaranteed. That was one of the first times I've ever did a, a large speech like that and or a keynote speaking um, to a large class like that um, in Ghana. I've done it before in the US, but 
um, I'm glad that uh, the message I was able to pass on to everybody about how they can look from within to actually build moving forward. But that's going to be it for us today. We're going to head back to the lab. Obviously, you guys know how this works. We're going to get this out to you because here at the Lab Video Game TV, our game is never over.